All right, hey everybody, welcome to part five of 263. Uh, just kidding, it's, it's only going to take about uh, 262 of these videos to get this project done. But uh, this is uh, part five. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll get this wrapped up pretty soon. But uh, I ran into a problem in the last one where I wasn't paying attention to get the top part uh, poured level. And so I ended up having to uh, go ahead and uh, make some adjustments, knowing that it was going to cause me to do more work down the line. So what we have here, I don't know if I can get at the right angle to see it, but you can see there's a gap here. There's also going to be a little bit of silicone mess for where I was having to dam it up to get that last pour on top. This one's actually close to what I was hoping to get all of them to look like. If that had happened on all four sides, we would be in business. And also there was a couple of areas where I had some blemishes on this part that I was originally trying to uh, uh, keep from getting damaged and nicked up. So I was hoping to maybe save some steps. So I was trying to take extra precaution and uh, it's one of those uh, hard lessons learned. Um, I, mean, I, I can still see, like I said, I think in the last video, I can still see possibly uh, doing it the same way uh, to reach a similar effect that I was going for. But the problem was I just was assuming that I could try to get everything done perfectly and get through and get it uh, knocked out. And uh, the lesson that was learned was just, you know, expect some hiccups, expect some delays. Uh, this one is definitely teaching me that lesson uh, every step of the way. I think what I'm going to do to remedy this and just uh, cut my losses on it and go ahead and just uh, try to get this piece wrapped up sooner than later. I'm going to take a couple of files that I've got here and I'm actually going to clean up these edges. And it's going to start a little bit and if I'm not careful I might even damage this here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean these edges up and then I'm just going to go ahead and do a clear pour on top of this and it's probably going to dome up and uh, I'll have to sand it down and then if it ends up scarring this up then I'll just fix all that later and just you know finally get to a point of where hey let's get the epoxy looking like we want it get a nice polish and shine and then we'll get the rest of it I mean if I have to paint it by hand, I can paint it by hand, but i um, just going to go ahead and, you know, cut to the chase on it, break down, and, and just try to get this done, because um, it's just, it's taken a long time, and uh, like I said, uh, lesson learned, just, you know, when you're doing something, expect the hiccups, expect the problems, and uh, that way you won't be disappointed or really upset with yourself when uh, they happen, because you are expecting them. So anyway, I'll go ahead and uh, start getting this file down and cleaned up and getting these ready to just go ahead and pour a clear coat on each part here. And uh, if it runs over the edges, I'm just going to go ahead and sand everything down. And instead of it going to, uh, I was really wanting to have this indented look and having it, you know, just look more organic, more natural. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and put that nice clear coat on it. It's probably going to dome up a little bit. I'll just sand everything down. And then if it hits the edges, you know, I'll fix all that up afterwards. And then we'll get this piece wrapped up. So, uh, all right. See you in a bit.
life. So I was uh, going through getting the uh, silicone off the corners and I'm just scuffing up the um, the orange epoxy just because since I'm going to go ahead and pour another layer of epoxy and just fill it up and then sand it back down. I want to make sure I have to get good adhesion. Now, so well, anyway, I'll just show you real quick uh, what it looks like when it's scuffed up. And I'm just going to go ahead and pour uh, epoxy and fill these areas up and then we'll just sand it back down. And if we end up damaging the background, we'll just uh, redo all of it. So uh, anyway, that's where we're at. And uh, we'll go ahead and start uh, blocking off the side and pouring some epoxy. What I want to do with this one, the... I had put all that silicone dams and everything in because originally I was using a uh, uh, an epoxy that was very watery. It's designed for deep pores, and so uh, I had continued to use that same process to block off areas because the only other, if you didn't have it sealed off, it would leak everywhere. This stuff is thicker and um, it's a little easier to work with. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try putting tape around uh, to dam it up and pour. Uh, the orange on here, we'll sand it down and we'll just go that route. Uh, anyway, um, we'll get started on pouring some epoxy and uh, see you in a bit.
we're down to this. Um, I know the editing has been pretty bad on this one so far. I'm in the middle of battling uh, sinus infection, and uh, this piece is drug out uh, quite a bit. And the, this one particular video has actually kind of been drug out. So I've been going back and forth and coming back to it and editing here and there. Uh, so I apologize for that. But we're now down to here. I sand it all the way through. I don't know if I can get the angle just right to see how good the polish is. But let's see. So you saw that I filled everything in and I just went ahead and sanded down past the paint. Um, I went from a 240 to a 300, then a 400, a 600, uh, then I stepped up to 8, uh, 1200, 1500, 2000, 2500. I could probably have left some of those out, but uh, uh, after getting bit a couple of times of this piece, I just was trying to make sure uh, I covered all my bases. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is the epoxy is pretty much polished out. Um, I'm going to try to uh, stain the wood. Uh, I think I'm going to go with black. Um, I just want to try to get a, a nice dark contrast. Also, um, since this wood has now been sanded and polished out as well, it's not going to accept the stain as well. So it may take a few coats on that, but that's going to be the next step is I'm going to try to get uh, the wood part stained. And then we're going to, uh, I'm actually going to um, uh, fully encase this one in epoxy and then polish that out. I want to, I want to kind of have it uh, uh, a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch off uh, the surface here. Um, but we'll see how that goes. But anyway, that's where we're at now. And uh, we'll get some stain on this. And I'll see you in a bit. Well, all right, so with my limited budget, we are going to use what I have on hand, not what I would like to use. Um, nothing against uh, water-based stain. It's just that for this, uh, I'd rather have a can of oil base that's already tinted the color I want. But I have this uh, water-based clear tint base, um, and I've got some black pigment. I'm not going to follow the directions, and this may, uh, I may hate this later, but... Uh, I'm just going to use a very little bit of this, a good bit of pigment, and try to get a good uh, color transfer onto here. So we'll see how well this will accept um, this, being that this has been sanded down so much. So uh, let's get started. I do recommend with stains to uh, stir as opposed to shake just because you'll get a lot of air bubbles if you shake it. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of water to this just to thin it out. Um, I don't want it to be too, um, uh, what's the scientific word I'm looking for, uh, uh, gummy. Yeah, I don't want it to be too gummy. So uh, anyway, I'm going to add just a little bit, not too much. We'll start with a little at a time. And we'll see how this pigment does. It's supposed to be black, um, but like uh, you saw that the tent base is, is uh, very milky white. Um, so right now it looks like a dark blue, purple, yeah, almost like a dark violet color, um, but it still may dry, you know, fairly black. So we'll see. Being that this has uh, a lot of orange in it, I won't be 
uh, mad if it comes out of the dark purple. Uh, that would work out nice, but but we'll see. I probably let it sit for a little too long, but I'm going to have to uh, just lightly go over this with probably the uh, 2500 or 3000 3, grit paper, um, real lightly, just to make sure I get any of the uh, stain off of the epoxy and also to get it that nice uh, shine before um, I put a final coat on it. I'm just using a dab of water to help uh, clean it off. I did let it sit for a few seconds too long, so it did start to uh, thicken up on me. This side will definitely get another coat. When you're working with this, uh, especially like this water-based thing, 
um, at a certain point you can reach like a saturation point where you've added as much water as the wood grain is going to allow it to take for a while. So like after this one here, I'm going to let it sit and fully dry. Not, I mean, I'm going to wipe it down, but I mean, after, before I apply another coat, if it's needed, I will let the piece fully dry just to make sure that it can accept uh, some more stain on the next coat. Because if you reach that saturation point and you keep trying to apply it, all you're going to do, it's not going to really accept it. You're just wasting time and material. And if, uh, especially a, a block like this, you know, if you get it too wet, you may start having problems uh, with uh, expansion and, and, you know, you might start having some grain uh, cracking, depending on the type of wood. Uh, but so you just want to make sure you don't oversaturate and, uh, and main thing, you're just wasting time, but you could actually damage your piece or just cause uh, more headache for yourself. And I'll have some splotchiness that I may have to fight because uh, originally the way I'd done this, I had coated this uh, with epoxy because I originally had tried to scorch the surface uh, and I'd run out of gas. So uh, I went a different route with it and I had coated it in epoxy so that it would accept paint because I was going to paint the back burner. Um, but since all that changed, I ended up sanding it back down. Um, even though I sanded past the paint and I even sanded the wood down to where it didn't look shiny anymore, there still may be some epoxy that seeped into the wood grain that will keep this from accepting stain very well. So it's not the... Um, This is not the best piece, I guess, to show all the application because I've done so much to it and I've worked the piece so much that I'm, 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 I've kind of overworked it in some areas. And so uh, it's not necessarily the best uh, uh, piece to give you guys any information. You know, I've learned quite a bit on it about uh, how to proceed and, and, uh, and what to expect and uh, many lessons in patience on this one. So, uh, but thanks for hanging in there with me while I do this. I mean, it's definitely, uh, I mean, it's been enjoyable. I can't complain. Uh, might not be profitable, but it's enjoyable. I'm not rubbing real hard here. I'm just kind of trying to work it in a little bit. And at the same time, you know, wipe some of the excess off. But I'm not rubbing real hard. Maybe a little harder over the epoxy area. Just trying to make sure I don't get any mess on it. But just kind of letting this sit on 
the wood part for a second. Just to, trying to get globs off, blend in any thick areas. And then if you have any uh, you know, inconsistencies, you know, you kind of want it to look like it was uh, worked into the wood. You don't want to have like just a straight line or a big blotch here. Right, we'll let that dry. I think what I'll do is I'm going to let it uh, fully dry and then I will do a really light uh, wet sand with like 3000 grit um, just to make sure I get it off of here. I uh, also want to see what it will actually do to the uh, stain of the wood with this water based stain um, and then uh, see if I need to go with a second coat after that. Um, all right, we'll go from there.